Good evening and welcome to the Thursday, January 17th regular meeting of the school committee. I would ask that everybody who is in attendance please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So we have uh, a, a good packed agenda tonight. We do have uh, one recognition that we would like to start off with, and I would ask um, Denise if you'd like to come on up and have a seat. And did you want to? So Denise, we have invited you here tonight just to sort of honor your service to the community and say thank you for all you have done with Hopkinton Youth and Family Services over time. And I really want to let the committee members talk to, you know, sort of the reason why they invited you here tonight and shower you with accolades. Thank you. So I guess I'll start. We can go in a line if other people want to speak as well. But I just, I really deep felt and from the bottom of my heart, thank you for all that you have done on behalf of the town and the schools. It, you are, have been everywhere for us and you have done so much for our students and for our parents and providing support in so many different ways. And I appreciate all the collaboration that has been able to happen between, uh, I wanna say your department, because in my mind it will always be you know, part of your department, but uh, between Youth and Family Services and the schools and the HOP Coalition. Uh, can't, cannot say thank you enough. I'm Denise, so excited to have you here tonight. Um, I was, of course, very sad when I heard that, uh, you know, you're moving on, but also happy for you personally that, you know, you're uh, pursuing something different that you want to try out in your life. So excited for that. Uh, but obviously, uh, you know, my interaction with you started through the schools and uh, watching you come to the schools at various events. And uh, I remember you running a program on resiliency. Uh, I also recall uh, hearing you as part of the search committee for the superintendent and you participating and speaking for Dr. Kavanaugh. Uh, most importantly, throughout all my interactions with you, I've always felt, uh, you know, that quiet work that you continue to do. And I think the work that you do is uh, it's very challenging. And, uh, you know, it requires a lot of heart. It requires a lot of uh, empathy. Um, it also requires a lot of confidentiality, and I think you have maintained all of that and done such a fabulous job in the community and always been there. So, um, you know, I've always felt that you're there to count down, not just for the kids, but also for us. Um, so I'm very, very appreciative of the partnership that you've had with our schools. Uh, I, I cannot imagine a replacement and who could fill your big shoes. Um, so... Thank you. Thank you. She's called her shoes big. <laughs> but I echo what they said, and I think that what you've done for the schools has been amazing, but I think just this community in general, um, so many folks have commented on the fact that you're moving on to something amazing, but they're going to miss you a lot. So, I mean, the lives that you've touched in the, in the school, but just in the community, which affects the schools indirectly anyway, is, has, you've done such an amazing job. So, wish you so much happiness in your new position, but you're going to be missed in town. Thank you. Um, echoing everyone, but also adding the gratitude for your steady presence and how welcoming you've been to the most vulnerable people in our community who feel very comfortable coming to you in dark moments um, and how gracefully and discreetly you have managed crises in this town. Um, I think we all feel that pang of loss knowing you're not going to be here. But thank you, Denise. Thank you. My colleagues have said everything so nicely, but I mean, we first connected on Youth Commission way back, and um, then the Hub Coalition, and there's not a person in this town that I've ever talked to who doesn't say that they can count on you, or what support you've given them, or you know how you've helped. I mean, you're just sort of a friend to the entire community, and have done it with such grace, and um, allowed everyone to maintain their dignity in, in crises and so forth, and so it, it's amazing what you've done, and we can't thank you enough. Thank you. Yes, before thank you we all let of you. you get away, I do want to say thank you also on behalf of the high school, middle school, elementary school um, administrators, Dr. Zaleski especially, 
Um, you have been so good to our kids and so good at writing grants for us and bringing programs into the schools that it really is going to be difficult to imagine what it's like when you're not doing that work for us. Um, you've been you know, the go-to person for all of us for a very long time, and I think even Officer Phil. Mm. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate um, everything that you had to say. I think all of you know um, that I've spent most of my life in this community, raised my kids here, um, my parents are still here, and I think um, this is probably one of my proudest professional accomplishments working on behalf of this town because I felt like I owed the town quite a lot, and I think I fulfilled um, my obligation to giving back and um, making my parents proud and doing right by my kids. Um, so I really want to thank you for all of your partnership and for the great um, colleague support that I always had. This has been, you know, one of the, the best positions in my life, um, and I'll always treasure the times that I spent here. So thank you all very, very much for being great colleagues and for recognizing me tonight. I appreciate it very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. you come Enjoy back teaching. and become a school committee member one day. <laughs> we are a fun group. I, I can see that. It's, it's quite a lot of work and I see all that you do. So thank you. Thank you. So I, you guys, I assume, are from the student council? Yes. yes. Why don't you guys come on up? Welcome, and thank you for taking time out. On a, I know it's a busy time of year for you guys. So we appreciate having you here. No problem. Yeah, thanks for having us. Um, I'm Tara. And I'm Megan. We're both juniors at the Hopkins High School. Yeah, um, so we just have a few quick high school updates. Um, we'll start off with weekend events. So tomorrow, the girls' basketball team um, is playing at 6.30 at home versus Norwood. Uh, the boys also have a game versus Norwood in Norwood. Um, on Saturday, there is a wrestling match at 10 a.m. and a hockey game at 4 p.m. at the New England Sports Center. And then as for Sunday, um, HHS is hosting a robotics competition um, where our Hopkinton robotics team will be competing. And on Monday, as you all know, is Martin Luther King Day, so we're hoping that a lot of students will give back to the community on their day off and volunteer. So a few groups that are doing that is Student Council, is um, volunteering at Project Just Because, and the National Honor Society is participating in um, the Hopkinton Day of Giving Back at the middle school. So hopefully those events will be really nice and a good way spent on our day off. And then the following week on Tuesday, Wednesday, um, Thursday, and Friday, we have our midterm exams. So we have spent the last week preparing for those and ending everything up this semester. And today, specifically in our advisory period, um, the Unite Leaders were able to answer questions for the freshmen about exams and provide advice for them. So I think that was really beneficial to those students since they didn't have exams like this in middle school. And to end everything off, um, we have a homework-free weekend next weekend, which should be well-deserved. <laughs> and um, <laughs> yeah, that'll be a nice relaxing time since we just spent the week with, with exams. I think that's all. <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> that's a big update right there. Yes. That's fantastic. Great. Good luck with exams. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Good luck. And I so appreciate that you guys take time to give advice uh, to the freshmen because I know that can be a stressful, daunting yeah. task the first yeah, time. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. That's great. Well, good luck to both of you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So that brings us down into... Uh, Item 4A, which is the SPED Stabilization Revolving Account Report. Thank you. Um, one of the new things, um, the Municipal <laughs> Modernization Act that was passed in 2016, the, the Special Education Stabilization Fund was one of the principles that came out of that Modernization Act. What the fund, um, the purpose of it is, is to create a reserve fund that can then be used in future years for unanticipated special education costs, out-of-district um, tuition, and for um, out-of-district transportation. 
So it really becomes, you know, a reserve for that unexpected um, thing that may happen within a budget year. Um, as we all know, special education, you know, children's needs change, um, and it sometimes can be unanticipated and unbudgeted. And so in an extreme case, this would give us the opportunity to utilize that reserve fund. Um, so the creation of the fund, it has to be voted by the school committee, it has to be voted by the board of selectmen, and then it's brought to town meeting. So this is just the creation of the fund, it's not funding the fund at this point in time. Um, once the fund is created and you know the, a funding source is created and, and it, it is funded, when we feel the need, the school committee, um, when we run into an instance where we feel that not utilizing the stabilization fund could put us into a budget freeze. You know, so that's the situation that we're trying to avoid, is to be able to continue business as usual um, and not go into that budget freeze and potentially utilize this stabilization. It would be an expense that would be voted by the school committee and also voted by the board of selectmen. So once those two votes happen, we can uh, utilize that account and pay expenses. The difference between this stabilization fund and other stabilization funds, when you want to spend out of another stabilization fund, you need a two-thirds vote at town meeting. But So that's the difference with this one. It does not operate that way. So you can use it during the year, excuse me, once you have the votes, both school committee and board of selectmen, and continue to, you know, march along with, with your budget year. Um, so it offers a lot of freedom. It's really good in terms of financial planning um, for us to have this account set up. So, so in terms of tonight, mm -hmm. so it, it has to come from us first and then go to a future board of selectmen meeting? So it would not make, uh, it would be on the warrant in the spring then, is that it accurate? Would, correct. For annual town meeting, because correct. it would require that. So tonight, are you looking for a vote, a particular vote from us, or just sort of, this is the beginning of the process for us? Um, if the committee is comfortable to vote, we, we certainly could vote. Um, because again, it's it's your vote, and then the board of selectmen vote, and then town meeting. So it's not the end of the process. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Once it's established, what f where the funds to fund it come from? So all funding of the the budget comes through the board of selectmen. So just as we were given guidance for what we are to propose our FY20 budget, um, it, all all the rest of the funding comes through the, the Board of Selectmen decisions. So we wouldn't need, <clears throat> excuse me, to create in our budgeting process money set aside to, fu to fund the fund? No. That would happen through Board of Selectmen? That's okay. correct. Okay. Yeah. All right. M Mr. Yeah. Arthur, make, um, you know, every year, some, sometimes when we have some funds left at the end of the year, if we are in a good position <coughs> like that, uh, would this be the fund where um, that money would go um no so it, it, it what is left of our appropriation would be a school committee decision okay. okay i see so this is just finding some other sources and like you said on a rainy day you want to be able to utilize it specifically for sped needs correct now, is this something um, that has been done in other towns? Uh, it's been done in, in many communities, yes. I see. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I know maybe this is early, but uh, what are the typical sources of this funding? Uh, some towns look to use a small percentage of free cash, as a, as a for instance. Okay. Um, and keep in mind, so depending on what we decide, in the, along with the Board of Selectmen, would be a good threshold as to what you put in there. Um, there are limits as to how high it could go, okay. um, but then once it's funded, that amount stays there That's and it. continues to roll forward. So it, it's, it's not a one-time funding. It's in there until it's, it's utilized. So it can be something that you build slowly over time um, through small increments with a goal set in mind as to where you want it to be. 
I, I think it's a great idea if you're able to do something of this nature, mm -hmm. and specifically with some of the unanticipated expenses Correct. Uh, that may happen. Mm -hmm. Thank you for bringing this forth. Mm -hmm. Questions? I'm comfortable with a vote to make yeah. it happen if yeah, everybody else so. is comfortable Thank with that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm comfortable. Yeah. Are there, is there specific, I, 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 I'm very much in favor of this, I think it would be great for us, uh, for obvious reasons of unforeseen expenses that have come up. My only hesitation in t doing it tonight is if there is particular wording that we need to, the, to have it correct uh, to match with what would go then through the Board of Selectmen and have it ready to go f through annual town meeting. And if there is wording, if we know what it is or if it needs more time to bring back it doesn't seem like it's pressing if it's going to have to go to annual town meeting in May anyway. Um, well, I can tell you that the fund is established under Mass General Law Chapter 40A, Section 13E. So if we vote to establish a special education stabilization fund under MGL Chapter 40A, Section 13E, I would say that your vote would probably follow the covered. right terminology. Okay. That's what I'm looking for. And it's, I don't know if either of you have anything to, uh, any recommendation to move forward with this tonight? I would just defer to the committee if okay. you feel comfortable moving forward with it. Okay. Should. If we, we need to change the wording, lady, we, we can, can change back. the wording, right? And if right. we don't, it's already done. Let's so do. in that case, I would uh, seek a motion for the creation of a special education stabilization revolving account as put forth under the Mass General Laws 40A, Section 13? Section correct? 13E. I, 13. Would, I would take out revolving, however. Okay. So stabilization the, fund. The SPED Stabilization Fund as established under Mass General Laws 40A, Section 13E. So moved. So moved. So motion by Meg. Mina? By, oh, sorry, by Meg. And is there a second? Second. Second by Mina. And all those in favor? Yes. Aye. 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 Passes. So that moves us then into the superintendent's report. All right. I have a little laptop switch. I that's not the visuals. <laughs> not all connected. Thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate that. All right. So I You'll just have to have... go back on. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I didn't realize we had gotten thrown off. I figured everybody didn't want to see everything on my computer until then. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we do. I, I'm always curious about the city. Though. Want to see my kids again? <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. There we go. I think we're back in action. <coughs> So since we were here just um, a week ago, I don't have a lot of school updates, uh, but we did have a couple of cute things that happened in our schools recently, so I thought I would share those with you and then also talk a little bit about strategic planning because I know when we were here last week, there was concern about timeline and community involvement. So right here what you see is um, Cindy Fitzgibbon, who is on Channel 5 in the morning and she does the weather and according to Mrs. Carver at the Elmwood School she has been trying and trying to get a meteorologist to come with the third graders um, and present a, a small workshop on weather. Uh, so I did go over to Elmwood to check this out and I wondered what it would look like when one person was making a presentation that was an hour long to 250 children and I can tell you that those kids were wrapped from beginning to end. It was really amazing. Uh, so some of the, the science that was very neat was she was showing them how clouds will form with heat and pressure. And she simply had a two-liter bottle, and every time she squeezed it, there'd be a cloud. When she stopped squeezing it, it went away, and the kids just thought this was absolutely magical. It was an amazing afternoon, uh, morning. So um, here you can see some Elmwood kids. If you are interested in watching them on TV, they will be on next Wednesday on, I think, the 23rd. And they do the wake-up call, I think, at 5.12 in the morning and 6.12 in the morning. So you've got to be up very early. And they say, we just got um, a lesson on weather. And then they say, good morning, eye-opener. And everybody gets really crazy for about, I don't know, a minute. Right? <laughs> and it's, it's quite exciting. There was no small amount of enthusiasm about that either. Yeah, people 
Speaking from experience, my house is all about, yes, exactly, that yeah. 612, we better have that TV on. <laughs> <laughs> For anyone there. who misses it, there will be a link to it on the WCBB uh, website, so Phew. you can oh, find it there <laughs> in case there is someone who oversleeps. <laughs> Awesome. There's also, HEF has given a grant too, right, for a weather station at Elmwood? Oh, yes. I Well, you know what? I think Elmwood may have had a weather station, but it just wasn't up and running or something. I mean, I think that in the lobby, they always had something that was on, you know, just okay. a flat screen TV there. Yeah. All right. And then the second thing, I'm going to try pulling that down a little bit. So what we have here, Karen Reno, who is the subject matter leader for PE Wellness K-12, uh, does new courses here at the high school on ballroom dance. And so you will get to see some of our high school friends uh, doing a merengue, I think, if I can. Mm -hmm. you'll actually get some music too. They're very talented, it's kind of amazing. Is there music for this too? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> but there are handouts for this. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll send those to you right now. Star Wars music playing in the background. Doing dances, we're yeah. reading. Them. I know. Okay. You, when she sent that to me, in full disclosure, there were several kinds of dance. So they are doing merengue and waltz and all different kinds of dance. It's pretty amazing to watch what they're doing there. There's no strategic planning dance. No, there is no strategic planning dance. Did you play the music either? Reading material here. <coughs> so I know last week when we talked about this, I think that there was some concern about you know the degree to which the community would be involved in the process and what the timeline would look like. So I wanted to update you on that. Um, so the rationale for sort of the model that we've we've gotten underway. Um, some districts actually do use their a planning process where the leadership team in the district actually launches the process. And so that is the one that, um, at least for now, the leadership team has started to take a look at. Like, what is it that we think is, uh, you know, sort of important in uh, the Hopkinton Public Schools? Now, I don't want anyone to think that the leadership team is making decisions that, you know, are going to impact what happens over the next three years. Really, this is stage number one. Like we are in the incipient stages of this. And the kinds of things that inform the work are um, the work that I do through the new superintendent induction program, the information that we can get from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, and then we have the entry findings uh, report that I had presented last week, and so the admin team has all of that information sort of in front of them. And as I had said last week, when we met on the 8th of January, we did look at all of that that stuff, and we put it all together and said, you know, where do we sort of see things, at least from their point of view, to be necessary over the next five years. Uh, we also have um, an opportunity to have diverse perspectives, and so when you'll see in future slides that 
as we move into the month of, month of March, that is the month where anyone from this community can give input into this process. We will, in fact, create focus groups. And so the focus groups will obviously be smaller groups of people. And people can contact us and say, I would like to be part of a focus group. The goal is to have people who are uh, representative of the K-12 experience. So if we have people who are you know, parents of Elmwood students, middle school students, high school students, that seems to be sort of the ideal. Um, but also people who represent different you know, cultures, diversity, socioeconomic statuses, and all of that kind of thing, so that we really are getting sort of a really nice cross-section. And if we have three or four different focus groups, then there'll be lots of opportunity for folks to sort of pitch in when we get to that place. The other people who will inhabit those focus groups are uh, some of our colleagues who are on the town side, uh, school committee members, administrators, teachers. They will all be a part of the focus groups, and you'll see that in just a moment. Uh, and I think last time I mentioned that we have contracted with a trained facilitator to do this work, it's someone who has been trained through the Department of Secondary and Elementary and Secondary Education. She's a school committee person in the town of Winchester. Uh, she's done this sort of work before. And I think what I like about having someone come in here who is exceedingly neutral is, and let's remember, not anyone, everyone is an entirely neutral because you always have feelings about public education or whatever. But I think that when we have people who live in the community, people who are administrators, teachers, students, people who work on the town side, people who are on the school committee, we all come with something that we sort of hope will happen in this. And I think if you have someone who is facilitating this who comes with a very sort of objective and neutral lens, that person working sort of as our note taker and facilitator um, kind of gives everyone sort of that, that fair shake. Um, and hopefully, uh, as we move through this process between now and June, every time we have a school committee meeting, there will be an opportunity for an update, and not simply just an update, but information will go out to the community. So if there are community members who want to come and make comments even in our own meetings, they will certainly be able to do that. All right. So one of the nice things that the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education does for us, and this I think is page three in your packet, they do the create a plan, align the systems, implement the plan. So if we wanted to think about where are we, the Hopkinton Public Schools, in this process right now, in that very top arrow, we are on bullet point number one, analyze district performance, educator evaluation, community feedback data for trends and patterns. That's where we are at this point in time. We have not even moved to bullet number two that says envision the future. I think that when we talk about envision the future, that is the kind of work that we will be doing through a survey that's going to go out in um, the next couple of weeks. And that's the kind of work that we'll do when we are in our focus groups and when we have folks who are coming here to the school committee meetings and giving us input as we go through. Eventually, this plan will be aligned to um, all of the other systems that we sort of have in place in the Hopkinton Public Schools. So we will connect it to educator evaluations, school improvement plans, the district plans, the budget, and all of those pieces will make connection to this. Um, I skipped over that third bullet under create the plan, but one thing that I, I like very much about it is this notion of backwards design. And sometimes I talk about that sort of in terms of how students write essays, right? They think they have an idea, so they develop for themselves this thesis statement, and then they continue to write and think and work and write and think and work, and they realize that everything is so much bigger that they go back to the beginning and do it all over again, right? So, when you saw my entry findings report, you could see that our current mission statement, vision statement, values, core value statements, those were all just sitting there in the, the condition that they are in currently. They haven't been touched. They haven't been thought about. Uh, and, I, and I think that when, when we hear from people and people are able to come in, voice opinions, give us feedback, um, then we get to that place where we are able to think more clearly about what is our mission, what is our vision. And the last part of this is just the implementation. And so 
I like that that box on the right hand side says district action plan one year. And so you start out with just thinking about what is that first year going to look like? What's it going to look like at the high school, the middle school, Hopkins, Elmwood, uh, Marathon? And if you get to the end of the first year and you've accomplished all of your pro process and product benchmarks, you say, that's wonderful. We can move on to year two. And sometimes we have to think about if we have not and are those still things that are worth pursuing. And sometimes you may re redesign your district plan just a little bit based on, on your findings after the first year. Uh, at this point, I would envision having something that is a three to five year plan. Um, we currently in the district have a are in year five of a six-year plan and one of my fears in creating something that is a five or six-year plan is after time you wonder about its relevance because it's really hard sitting here today to imagine what the hopkinton public schools are going to look like in five years so what does our timeline look like you also have this in your in your packet and so as you are looking at those sheets of paper, you can sort of see that we are right here where, we, where the orange line is. At this point, I, am share, I have shared with the Admin Council uh, sort of a skeleton, a skeleton timeline for the work. And you have in front of you right now a skeleton timeline for the work. And what I'm hoping to accomplish tonight is that one of you will agree to work with us in survey development. If you do, the consultant will sort of be leading that work, and I will be there. Jen is the assistant superintendent, will be there, a school committee member, a couple of building principals. We will develop a short survey, get that out to the community. That survey will really be about bullet number two, envisioning the future. Because I think when I had done my listening tour, we heard a lot about where people have been, what they think you know, has gone on, where they think their children are right now, but where do we want to take things in the next year, two years, three years, four years, however far out we, we look to make this happen. So just moving down that timeline, uh, we would be presenting um, the survey to the school committee and getting that survey out to parents on the 7th of February. We'll send a reminder to parents on the 12th of February and after that we'll start to solicit some interest in focus groups who would like to serve um, and, and why. And on February 12th I'll present an update to the admin council on where we are. I only chose February 12th because those are the dates that we already have scheduled meetings. Between February 15th and February 25th uh, we will be able to take the data that we have found in that same group that put the survey together. We'll be culling that data so that it's in a form that's really easily digestible so that we can hand it out to anybody who served on a focus, who is going to serve on a focus group, or anyone who's interested in having that data. What does it look like? Where do we think we are? So the entire community can have access to the survey data results. I won't do all the blues because they say the same thing. May I ask one question? Of course. Um, you talked uh, that January 8th time frame, the big buckets, right? Uh, which I'm assuming are the focus group areas. Well, they may or they may not be, but what we talked about as an admin team is what were our big buckets. Okay. So one of the things that, I'll give you an example, one of the things that was, I think, sort of on the tip of everyone's tongue, was increased enrollment in the district. And not just to say, oh my gosh, we have increased enrollment, but to say, you know, what is our funding going to look like so that we can be sure that the programs that we think are valuable educationally for kids stay in place, okay. right? Or what's going to need to happen if we need to add classrooms to the high school or if we are accepted into the pipeline with an SOI for Elmwood and we want to renovate that building and do um, in addition to that building. And what's it going to look like if you decide to change the configuration of you know two elementary schools in the district? Or what's it going to look like when we are asking the community for money? How is the communication and how is the messaging going to go out? Right. So even though that might be something that would happen over the next you know, three to five years, one of the things that we learn when we talk about MSBA is that you know, you've got to think about five to seven years to have a core project like Elmwood. Where were we going to be 
if we don't get invited into that pipeline this year, what kinds of things do we have in place to ensure that? And, and I think that that is really important work. But even though the administrative team thought that was important work, the community may not. Who knows? Right. right? And, and I guess that's what I was trying to ask that, you know, you have the big buckets up there. And as you're walking through, you were talking about the survey and survey results. So will those two be connected and then the final big buckets? All the data we have in front of us will start to inform those buckets. And it will be interesting when I show you what another district's uh, strategic plan looks like because you'll see that it's it's very different from the strategic plan that we have in place currently. If you look at our current strategic plan document, it probably has 35 to 40 pages in it. And um, it gets to that place where you really have to kind of rifle through it to find what you're looking for. And over time, I'm not sure that what that plan says means exactly what we think it means anymore. So you'll sort of see what that looks like. But to go back to your question, yes, all the information we have in front of us should be informing, informing the work. Thank you. So yes, on February 28th, when we present, or when I present to the school committee um, on the progress of our strategic planning work, you'll get to see all of that information. We'll talk about some of the makeup of the focus groups. Hopefully, on those focus groups, we'll have a school committee member, two administrators, three parents, maybe someone from the town side, three teachers, an assistant superintendent, and superintendent. Uh, and that's just sort of a guesstimate right now of who would be on, on those. But if there are three or four of them and we're looking at 12 members, we're talking about you know somewhere between, like I don't know, 35 and 50 people that would come together at least for that part of the process, right? Uh, the focus group work, again, will be facilitated by Cindy Boney, who is our consultant. Uh, I would also say that any parent who might not have been selected to actually be on a focus group can certainly attend all of the focus group meetings. And then after this, it's really just you know the, the work of updating as we go. And sometime after we, we finish with all of the focus work throughout March and April, we'll begin to um, create a rough draft of what that plan will look like. And we will continue to bring it back and to publicize it so that people have an opportunity to continue to look at that. Um, and I would just say that, you know, as people make comments on it, I think that a lot of the things that people, you know, will want to happen will need to be things that are tenable within, you know, the construct of public education. They'll need to be things that, you know, data is supporting. But I think that this is an opportunity for us to really have a vision of what Hopkinton is and what Hopkinton can be. Like, I don't think that we are, you know, any of the neighboring communities, but we should have sort of our own brand. And I know that when I did my entry findings report, there were people who said, we have a good brand here. And how do we continue to reshape that, massage it, take it into um, the next decade and, and see who we are. So. Yeah, and I'm hopefully at... by June 30th, you will have, hopefully. But I mean, I would, I would prefer not to rush it and take our time and have a really good product than to use June 30th as a be all end all deadline. Yeah, I think, I think this is a great framework that you have put yeah. together here. Uh, one question on my mind is, um, the old strategic plan. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one thing that stands out in my mind from previous conversations uh, when uh, Dr. McLeod had presented how things have improved in the pa five years that the strategic plan has been in place was goal setting for kids, not just the final results, right? So there were some things which were still there. So how will we connect um, things which are still out there with what we are planning ahead. So a lot of work was done. We have achieved a lot in the five years. So just want to hear your thoughts. Well, I would on simply that. say that if there are things that are year six things that we would want to carry into the future, we will certainly make that happen. Is it okay to jump in? Yeah. Uh, so I, I will j say that I initially, as I, I did come to you between last meeting and this week, I was kind of stuck in the old model of how it's done. And I, after looking through this with you on the side and then also in here, I think this is a much better way of doing it in terms of getting more voices from the community, that it feels like this is empowering more people to be part of the process rather than just a small 
a smaller steering committee. So I, and I like how it's laid out in a clear way for us to see the steps going forward and where the different points are where it will come back in here. Thank you. Yes, and I, I like that sort of the boots on the ground yeah. admin and, and teachers will also have buy-in here as well. Right. You know, that's, so. I, I think that's great. And I also was thinking back to when we were at the uh, MASS, MASC conference when they were talking about how the strategic plans of today are different than they were when our old strategic plan was created and how much more useful they are when they're that smaller document that people are familiar with what it is and what it means and it's a shared understanding of it. Yeah, I like it too for that reason. I feel like um, I really like how it starts with the people who are in the in the trenches basically, the, the admin and who are getting information from the teachers. I think those are the sort of the idea people. They know what's happening now honestly, legitimately in the classroom, not what's supposed to be or theoretically or, or any of those sort of awesome rosy picture, here's what should happen, they know. And so I like that it's um, it's starting with them and then kind of building from there. And you know, I think the community input is, is huge and is valuable, um, but I, I, I like that it's starting with the, the teachers and the, and the admin because we, like as parents, we all view the schools through the lens of our own children. Mm -hmm. So I think that it's good to kind of get a bigger picture first and they see all the kids. So all 3,000 kids are being accounted for by the teachers and the admin, not just our own personal experience. So I, I kind of like that too, because you definitely bring like that bias that you were talking about. It, it's tilted based on the experience of your own child, mm -hmm. which is not unimportant, but there are 3,000 children. So you got to yes. kind of balance the, the, so I do, I like this a lot. I think this is going to be good. And, I, and once those big buckets are figured out, I think that's going to be a real, be, real turning point because once the yeah. focus groups start, we'll get some good information. I have just one comment. You know, you talked about the kids and the students and the large student body. Um, I don't know in your listening tour if you had student voices in there because, you know, their experience matters equally. Um, so how would that get included here in well, the only process? Only high school students. Okay. And I... I was sort of, it was an interesting concept because I thought, okay, so these are kids who have experienced the Hopkinton Public Schools, you know, some of them through ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, but, you know, a good substantial portion of the Hopkinton Public Schools. And what I found interesting was they seem to not have a whole lot of recollection of grade two and grade three. Do you know what I mean? It's like sad, They were living it? in that, oh my goodness, this is so much better than the middle school world if you were a ninth grader. And so really the vision for them was a lot of here and now. Right, right. Because I remember Miss Parsons sharing the story of the sixth grader who was outspoken. And I've certainly seen kids in Hopkins being outspoken and not to speak of our own kids, uh, you know. Uh, so I guess I'm, I'm wondering how those voices could also come in and their thoughts on what they would like the school to be. So perhaps as we do, you know, sort of email blasts, we'll make sure that we are hitting student emails as well. Okay. Thank you. I'm continually amazed by your organizational skills, Dr. <laughs> well, I have to thank my friend over here. We put this together. It does. Nancy, when we have the school committee meetings that we receive um, updates, will those be public forums? Can we have a discussion with the, pop, the, the community if they want to come forward and have dialogue? So that was my only concern, that just making sure that there's an opportunity for beyond the um, 12 or however many parents are on the focus groups, that if the community wants to engage in dialogue, with, mm -hmm. um, can we arrange that somehow? I don't know how we have to term like publicize right. our kind meetings. Meeting it has to be a right. public forum versus a standard meeting. Right. Sure. That where there's, it, as opposed to just a public comment, you're looking for something where there's, we're able to, like we would at a public hearing, to do the give and take. Exactly. Either in this meeting or separate. Is that exactly. I think it would be very, it, it's frustrating if they have something they really want to ask about and we really can't engage. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure we have an opportunity to engage if there's substantial feedback or questions or. I think that's I great. Think that's, I yeah. think that's a good. Yeah. Through 
All right, so what does a modern day strategic plan looks like? Look like? I actually had a couple of them, but in the in the laptop switch. I'm only going to show you Weston because that's the only one that I have a link to. All the others that are, are posted are Microsoft Word documents. Uh, maybe I can make that. Can we get the idea about you? page one of three up there, as opposed to one of thirty-four. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's the big picture idea we're going for. Right? You will notice that it does say page one of three. So they have their mission, vision, core values, and theory of action. And what they've done is they have created for themselves only three buckets. Their buckets are to strengthen educational practices in order to promote intellectual stretch, engage learning, equitable access, and excellence for every student every day. Their second one is to foster students' well-being in order to develop their emotional resiliency and intellectual curiosity. And their third is to champion a school community committed to cultural competency, trust, and mutual respect in order to prepare students to be citizens of the world. So there's their three like buckets. Those. And then you get their strategic initiatives. Those are the things that they are going to work on. So if we look at something like 1.1 that says expand student-centered experiential authentic learning opportunities for students that require real-world application, intellectual curiosity, collaboration, perseverance, and critical thinking, that would find its way into um, each one of the school improvement plans and into educator goals. So what does that look like when it's manifest, say, in their middle school? And this is a, uh, just a slide here that measures the outcomes. How are you going to know if, if it works? <coughs> Those are their three pages. Could you just go back to their um, mission? Like the first, oh, sure. for yes, just I'm a sorry. second. I didn't mean to zip through. Oh, so in here. theory, I know you said that their mission and vision, um, we may like the writing of an essay, we might come back to that. Mm -hmm. but in theory, a mission doesn't fluctuate all that much for an organization over time. I mean, if we get it right, it right. should be pretty enduring, I would think. I the, agree. The vision can sort of evolve, but the mission often stays pretty constant. In our case, we're kind of open to still, are we, are we keep, we're still open to maybe tweaking our mission. Is that in our case? Oh, yes. Or, yeah. I mean, okay. currently, I think that we still have Learn, Create, Achieve together. Yeah. And the vision, um, how would you define that? Do you, do, have you talked about that with the consultant? Like, what is that supposed to be? No, so we have not talked about this with the consultant. We haven't talked about it with the admin team. I think that at some point, you know, we can kind of go back to that when we have and I know people will say, if you don't have a mission in your mind, but I don't think that at this point, 18 administrators in a room should have a singular mission in their mind. Like a mission, I think, should come from what does this community and what do the educational leaders hope for, you know, in the coming mm -hmm. three to five years. I'm excited for this. I'm hoping that, I'm personally hoping that we um, articulate through the vision when we're done something yes. that enables parents to know what the, what they're getting from Hopkins Public Schools, like th which is maybe different from Franklin or Framingham or what. Like we're our own community with our own um, focus, our own needs, our own vision, and I'm I'm hoping that we get clear enough in the first two buckets that people understand Hopkinton and and sort of the contract that we're sort of making with our parents and what we're going to deliver. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, it's good. I'm excited for this work, too. Yeah. It should be, re like, really fun. It, 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 it's going to be hard work, <laughs> I'm glad it's you going both to said be that. really fun work. Mm -hmm. Because as it, it, I, I find it exciting as well, it and is. I want, did not want to be the only one that found this to be enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a three-year plan, I think, right? From far away to, yes. let's say, 18 to 21. So, yeah. you know, three pages, three years, three buckets. I'm sensing a theme here, but yeah, it, it, it's the same. I like that because you can read it. A parent can read it. I, I'm not saying parents won't read the 35-page document, but you know, oh, the sure motivation right. starts at right. Three pages you can pick up and do. Yes, and I think another thing is when you have something that's so succinct, you know what you want to be good at. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. You don't think I'll just be good at everything. Right, right. exactly. And you know, while you're going through the motions, I would also hope that the measurement of um, these achievements as you have laid out the plan, what are those measures? 
how would you go about it? Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's a survey, whether it's performance results, what are those things? Maybe those are some things to think about too. Yes, so they do have their outcomes up there. Some people call them process and product benchmarks. There's lots of different names that people apply to them, but I do think that we have to measure the degree to which we are meeting you know, what we put forth. Is the admin team Beyond excited? Beyond the fun work. Mr. Keller. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I just walked in. Hold on. <laughs> Is the admin team, admin team excited for strategic planning? Yes, I believe so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So for tonight, the one thing I'm looking for is one of you to serve on a committee to develop a survey with us. I would love to do that unless there's somebody else that is dying to go be for a it. Survey. Right, you you find yourself in line. I'm happy to help, but you go for yeah. it. Did you want no, to? No, no, no. I don't. You jumped in. You I, go. Okay. <laughs> I do not want to step on any toes. <laughs> no, not, that not is, at all. Like, go for yeah, it. That's yeah, that's fantastic. Um, all right. That's hired. <laughs> You're hired. <laughs> You're in. All right. I'll have my people call you people. <laughs> my people are all under the age of 10, so. Okay. <laughs> I'll call you directly then. <laughs> okay. Thank you all. Okay, so is that, we're on to you. Okay, so I will start out by saying that I have approved the warrants 19 065, 19 066, and 19 068, and all warrants have been included in your packet. And then uh, the next thing I had here was I wanted to do a little update on the school committee office hours, but since we were not all there at the same time, it would uh, do, you and Jen want to talk a little bit about, because I know you had some, the concerns that were raised before Amanda and I were there, and then we yeah. could talk about that. Sure, sure. So um, it was brought to our attention that um, the company that's coming in, or that's hoping to come in on South Street, Lycan, um, presented in front of the Board of Selectmen last Tuesday, and one of the things that was mentioned during the presentation was an opportunity for um, internships. I mean, with the understanding that the company is trying to, to, to sell themselves and say, yes, you want us in town, um, but it was it presented as a possibility, you know, to, um, you know, they said it, so maybe we should hook up with them and find out what they have to offer and whether or not it's, you know, strictly internships. Maybe there's a um, some sort of partnership or funding opportunity for STEM or some related um, related field. So, um, so we thought that was interesting. But also the other piece that um, is is I, I'm not going to be good at explaining this because I. Totally, we, both Mina and I were both like, huh, okay. So, um, so the idea of the company um, seeking out something called a TIF, and if you, if I mess this up, please feel free to jump in and tell me I'm messing it up. I'm okay with it. Um, that I, um, I guess uh, our town manager is in, will be working on the negotiations um, to f to give the company a tax break in order to come in and um, renovate the building and as they bring in more people, make improvements on the building to allow for more space. Um, so again, don't quote me on all these details, but the, the big picture is how does the tax break offered to the company ultimately affect the schools, given that the company, you know, even if they bring in 100 new employees and only half of those employees have two children, that's still 100 more children that we would need to absorb into the Hopkinton Public Schools as a result of this this new company coming in. So, I mean, all good things, but but still, you know, with space already being a concern and budget constraints already being a concern, if there are tax implications that may affect how the Hopkinton Public, Public Schools are benefiting from this company, um, I think that we need to either, you know, I don't, we don't really, I didn't get the, the, um, the feeling that there was a, you know, as much as I'm hedging right now, I feel like there was a lot of hedging going on. We don't really know what's happening, but maybe we should know what's happening. And so that's sort of the big message out of there. We should maybe touch base with Norman and find out um, if these negotiations have started, if, um, if they have started what's going on and how can we make sure that our interests are protected in this process. Um, so 
you know, for whatever that's worth, that, that was sort of the big thing that came out of that conversation. Um, the internships would be great if the company does come, but making sure that we can, can fund the additional students that may come as a result of this company coming into town is kind of a big deal at this mm -hmm. point. So, um, you know, great to have industry come into the town, but making sure that we cover our interests as well. Did I mess that up? Oh, you did. Yeah, no. Very well. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> what do you have to add? Yeah, yeah, yeah I think that is it. Uh, I, I really appreciate, uh, you know, the resident coming in and sharing these thoughts and in a very thoughtful manner. Yes. Um, and um, just bringing it to our attention that is the school committee talking about this, that the impact of the school? <laughs> and um, me and I said, Not no. yet, not yet, <laughs> so, not yet. Uh, so, yeah. so very thankful for that. Yep. And, and definitely on the internship front, we had a long conversation and a little bit on the stem of what new possibilities are. Um, and, you know, internships beyond just uh, uh, this company that's coming up in town, otherwise. So it was a good conversation. It was. It was great. That's great. So nice it, to have someone come to office hours. I, you know what? We had a couple a more. Win. We had two more that came uh, when Amanda and I were there. And I really... Uh, I so appreciate people coming out that taking time out of their day with enthusiasm to know what's going on with us. And yes, I, that's great. I, even if we didn't have 100 people there, I mean, three I think is a good yeah. number to make ourselves available for. Uh, we had um, one who had questions that were related, uh, more general, and looking just to kind of say, hey, what are we doing and how does it work? Uh, so we had a good conversation with that parent. And then another parent who had more specific uh, questions regarding special education and out-of-district uh, placements, and also wanted to pass along. We did have one person who was very complimentary about uh, appreciating how our superintendent listens to parents and uh, solicits feedback and how approachable oh, you have been. Okay, so I did you. want to pass that along That's to you. Nice. Thank you. Uh, do you want to add some of what? Oh, I think you covered it. Yeah. OK. All right, so that. Um, and we can look, uh, hopefully, to put a date on, I would say, after February break, perhaps in February. So. Then the final thing I, I have in my report, and I apologize because I got it to you all late. I don't know if you all had seen the email I sent out regarding the, so every board and committee in town is the chair is asked to send a report to the town. And I wanted to see if you guys, have, I don't have to hand it in tomorrow or anything like that, but I wanted just to show you kind of where my thoughts are in a rough draft, and then also to see if there are things that I am missing that you guys think I should add in, or things that you think I have added in that I should take out and never speak of publicly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I actually appreciate the fact that you're sharing this with us and um, you know, giving us an opportunity to provide feedback. I, I think it is very well drafted. Okay. Um, I'm going to relook at it um, to see if there is anything else that comes to my mind too. Yeah. One know. thing I had thought would be nice to add a little bit more to are some of the things that I have not been a part of, uh, some of the things going on with the website, the school committee website, and the overall website, and some of the policy things and the conversations that we have taken our own little, sure. uh, they're not silos because we're connecting them all together, but I want to make sure that what's out there is inclusive of some of the work that I have not been as deeply a part of. So does anybody have anything specific they want to pull out now or you want to circle back to it? I need to read it with okay. care and I'll, I'll send you a note. Okay. I will look forward to that. Great. <laughs> All right. Then with that, I'm going to flip, flip screens here for a minute. Uh, that brings us into liaison reports. So do people have any liaison reports? I know it feels like we just met, but I don't think we did liaison reports last week. I, I have one, uh, if I may. Go, go. Um, this is with the Marathon Fund Committee. Uh, I actually really enjoy uh, being on that committee uh, because there are you know, people coming to ask for funds for interesting things, and uh, it's getting approved. Um, so two things got approved um, this past week. One was a $1,500 grant for uh, the fishing derby to Officer Phil, which is, and it's always a pleasure to watch him. Um, and the other one is the post-prom. I think it is um, over $4,500 that has been granted by the Marathon Fund Committee. Two parents came, shared, um, you know, what's going to happen and swore us to confidentiality because no one's supposed to know about it. Uh, 
so it, it was really nice. Um, the other thing that's happening there is there's a review of the charge of the fund committee that's going on. I want to bring it back to the uh, school committee perhaps in the next uh, meeting or uh, uh, as it gets a little finalized as to uh, the membership specifically wanting your feedback. So more to come on that. It's nice to be on the other side of funding issues since so much of what we're doing as a school committee is looking for funds to be able to be on the, the passing out end. It's going to feel good. It is. And it's a wonderful group of uh, people. We have meetings coming up, actually, so next time we'll be crazy with reports. <laughs> hours of reports. Yep. Do you want to touch on CPAC a little bit since I did miss the very beginning of that? Yes, and, and also the Youth Commission have been, all the members have been working really hard to put together a wonderful program for us for Monday, for Martin Luther King Day, which begins in the morning and the first thing they want from you is your blood. It's the blood drive. Literally. Um, but there are lots of fabulous activities, so I hope a lot of people in the community will show up like they did last year. Um, why don't you do CPAC? So I, I am the liaison, but I did miss uh, the very beginning, and I don't want to... I don't even remember what we did, Nancy. <laughs> well, how about I bring it back to the next meeting, because yeah, it, it will dude. be before CPAC, and I will have, we can discuss the parts that I missed. It was congenial. It was congenial. It was congenial it was a lovely and useful, and, yeah. and everyone left with a smile on their faces. Is that too much? No, I think we were smiling as we walked out. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, there were uh, quite a few different administrators there that were able to give some information on different, yes. uh, some discussion yeah. of and, ESY. And there were good plans afoot for ESY, yeah. um, and yeah. thinking yeah. along yeah. with parents about ways <coughs> to improve it, and to incorporate parents in the activities. So um, the director of special ed has sent out a talent survey to families. In case any family members have talents they would like to bring to the extended school year program in the summer to work with the kids. Mina, Commissioner Barad. Uh, yes, that. Just a thought. Just. Yeah, I, I would love to do something. Maybe I'll touch base with you. Thank you. Yes. Okay. The other thing that I will say about the CPAC meeting was that uh, Dr. Zaleski sent out the information about parent safety care. Yes. So yes. anyone can do that. You do not have to be a parent of a special education child. Everybody it can sign up for safety care. The only issue with signing up for safety care is they are taking people in increments of 30. So my guess is that there will be a wait list pretty quickly. I'm sorry, what is safety care? Yes. Uh, what is it? Oh, sorry. <laughs> so how do you sort of look at your child and recognize the triggers that, you know, will cause your child to the tantrum or go into dysregulation? And how, how do you get your whole family to sort of practice, um, you know, things that are proactive as opposed to reactive? Nice. Yeah. And there are two evenings. I don't remember when they are. Um, but to go to the second session, you must attend the first session because they're successive. Yeah, and it's coming up soon, February 5th and February 12th. Um, and I think an example that was given was really helpful to me, that if you struggle a lot, say with a child who has difficulty transitioning from the Xbox to doing homework, yes. mm -hmm. you might pick up on some of the <coughs> tips here. Yes. So a few things they'll focus on in the first meeting are incident prevention, caregiver behavior, mm -hmm. Um, antecedents and challenging behaviors and de-escalation. So I think it sounds to me like a wonderful learning opportunity for how to parent, generally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and for all parents, it's not yeah. just not just limited to yeah. special education yeah, families. That's right. You know, Meg, my wheels are churning in my head. I'm wondering if young Mr. Bader and I could do a dosa class during years. Why? Oh, Maybe. you're back on that other subject. Yes. 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 I miss what is. Absolutely. Cooking. So, uh, yeah, cooking. My, I don't know. That's a possibility for ESY. Oh, yeah. oh God. Yeah. We've lost Mina for the rest of the meeting. She's going to do that. Yes, <laughs> I'm thinking about I'm it. I'm waiting for your sign up to come out. <laughs> 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 yeah, do it. Good talent. <laughs> I just have a quick update on the website. Committee, we had our first round of vendor uh, presentations. We have um, this past week, and Mr. Ghosh set up our second round for next um, week. And I think we're, we will have seen by the end of next week, I think six vendors in total, um, an hour plus each, kind of back to back. It's a lot to take on. But um, the subcommittee will then be meeting after those days to review what we've seen, 
we have a um, very detailed checklist of requirements and so forth that we're all kind of going through as we hear the presentations, and we're hoping to make a selection by the early by early February. That's so exciting. Yeah, it's a great job. It's very exciting. Yeah, great it's, job. It's It'll be a lot of work. A lot of work to get from you know here to the end goal. A lot of um, data cleanup. A lot of the vendors have emphasized cleaning the content, which is going to be painful for everybody involved, I think. Um, a lot of the teachers and administrators, too, are going to feel that, unfortunately. But they encourage not bringing your, your junk drawer. If you move houses, don't bring your junk drawer. That's a junk drawer. <laughs> Clean it out. Um, so it's, there's going to be a lot of work, but it will be very exciting. I think the outcome will be great. Good resource. That's well done. I just have a quick one on the bridge, um, which, as you know, we did commission the bridge as a, a subcommittee back uh, several meetings ago now. And we are now, we actually have not put the whole group together, but when we come back in the next one, we will have met and have had the whole group together. We also have a student group who has reached out to me uh, who is interested in fundraising to um, benefit the bridge to help offset some of the needs that are identified through the schools. So Great. Fantastic. That's where we are with that. Uh, and that brings us, unless, are there any other? Okay. Into new business A, which is the school committee vote on the school budget. So, um, oh, yeah, let's actually take Mr. Keller. Or do we, do we oh, yes, Mr. Keller out of order? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. Thank you. Absolutely. Would you like to come up and, and we'll take your um, middle school? Handbook out of order here. Are, are you here for the intent to travel? Or are we doing or both? Oh, he's here for everything. He's here. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, so he is a one lot. stop shopping. So. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, we will let you jump in with whichever of your items you would like to jump in with first. Thank you. I appreciate you accommodating. Um, so <clears throat> I think um, if it's okay, I'll start with the uh, uh, intent to travel. Um, so I have, I have two intent to travel, two intents to travel um, for next school year, obviously. Uh, the first is uh, Nature's Classroom, which is our grade six field trip. Uh, next year, if approved, would mark our 27th year attending Nature's Classroom. Uh, we are looking to uh, do this trip uh, four days, three nights, October 22nd through, that's Tuesday, October 22nd, <coughs> Friday, October 25th. Me. The approximate cost is $360. And uh, that includes a uh, round trip uh, busing to Charleston, Mass, where we now go for Nature's Classroom. Uh, it includes um, uh, a medical uh, professional on site there uh, at, at the Charleston site. It includes rooming and meals for all students. Up there. And then wait for New York City. Wait for New York. Do we do have to do this? Yes, we do separately. Yeah, we do. Yeah. So, right. I, any questions? Uh, I love nature's classroom. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's all good. <laughs> it's a great way to start middle school. It really is. Yeah. It, uh, so many students I know it, later on look back on that with fond memories. So and it seems like it really brings the grade together. So then I would uh, seek a motion to approve the intent to travel for the grade 6 October 2019 nature's classroom. So moved. Motion by Meg and a second. Second. By Jen. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And that is all set, so we can move into the next one. Thank you. Uh, so the second intent to travel is for our grade 8 field trip to New York City. Um, next year, if approved, would mark our fourth year going to New York City. We changed from Washington, D.C. in 15. Our first year going to New York City was the 16th, 17th school year. Uh, this trip would be uh, from Wednesday, June 10th, where we leave Hopkinton Middle School and return on the evening of Friday, June 12th. The cost for that uh, trip is $775. Again, that's an approximate amount. Um, and it's a little bit higher than this year um, because of the number of students. Um, so right now the grade, uh, the current grade seven is 236 uh, total students. Um, and the company we work with, Jump Street, has agreed not to raise their prices for the next two years. However, um, their pricing is based on number of uh, total students. And so um, that gets us up at the higher end of pricing um, for that. So right now it's approximately 775, but they certainly said that they would be willing to work with us um, to see if uh, we could make some changes. But that's where it is at, at this particular moment. 
Um, so for New York City, um, you know, we uh, attend Ellis Island, uh, which we've been doing actually. We're going to shift away from Ellis Island this year because we felt like um, it, there's um, not a lot there um, for students. It's, it's a great place to be. However, we have found it to um, not be very interactive and the students tend to just be wandering around looking at the names. However, we just learned that a new memorial is opening, uh, I believe, next month there. Uh, and so we're hearing some good things about their new museum, I should say. Um, so we have actually already been booked uh, to go to that for this school year. Um, so we're excited. So uh, we do that. We do a, um, an evening dinner uh, dance cruise. Um, we go to the 9-11 Memorial Museum, and uh, there's a variety of uh, activities we've taken to play. This year, we're actually going to see To Kill a Mockingbird on Broadway, which just opened uh, in December. Um, and so it's been a very positive experience, uh, encompassing many of our curricular areas at the middle school. What grade did they read To Kill a Mockingbird? Any grade. It is, yeah. yeah. It's actually it's just getting ready to start in a little bit. Yeah, that's, that's great. Yeah. That's a nice, a nice tie-in. What is, do you know roughly, as a percentage of the, but this the, either this year or last year's grade eight that attended. I do. Um, so um, I hadn't finalized my numbers. That's what I was working on uh, when you called me up. Oh, sorry, uh, but, sorry, interrupt. Uh, at present for this year, um, t um, well, I'm so I'm flipping this. So 88 percent of our students are going this year. Uh, last year we had 92 percent that attended uh, the field trip. So it's been between um, for the four years we've gone. Our first year. There was a few more that did not attend. I think there was still, people were still kind of waiting to see what this was going to be all about. So I think it was around 14% that first year that did not attend. And what do they do if they do not, it, I assume they're still in school. Uh, yeah, I mean, so some parents opt not to send their children. Um, but um, the students who do come to school, um, the teachers that are here plan activities that, um, that are similar to what we're doing uh, when we're in New York City. So obviously we're not going to Broadway, but um, they're doing different activities that um, kind of bring the, the that kind of bring the curriculum to life, and, and so nice. uh, we have some teachers that work on a, a variety of things. Okay. Other uh, any other questions on that or comments? Okay, then I will to make sure I get this in the accurate wording here. Uh, just looking for a motion to approve the intent to travel for grade eight to New York City in June of 2020. So moved. Motion by Meg, second. Second. By Jen, all those in favor? Yes. Aye. Okay, and you are all set with that one as well? Thank you. Um, so the next item are, are changes to the handbook, uh, which I believe are, not I believe, but are both at the middle school and high school. Um, so I'm hoping maybe Dr. Kavanaugh, if you could give me a little lead in with um, what precipitated these changes. I can. Okay. So, <laughs> there are sort of two different events that have precipitated the changes. The first is, and you may remember that um, public schools used to go through what was called a coordinated program review, and uh, they would come in to take a look at you know, things like civil rights and special education and L education and sort of all of those pieces. Um, they now have renamed that to tiered focus monitoring. So that's what um, is currently going on in the Hopkinton Public Schools. It was very interesting because when they made the change from coordinated program review, CPR, to TFM, we had just gone through our coordinated program review. And you know, typically that happens to you, I think, once every 10 years. But uh, we are, are back on the docket. And so that is why we have changed some of the language. The language is just required changes. So when you know Debbie <laughs> tells us that we have to make these changes, we make the changes. So um, there are changes in the middle school handbook um, to non-discrimination, civil rights, and bullying prevention and intervention on pages 5, 26, 32, 33, 36, and 45. And those, I know, were highlighted uh, in the packets. Uh, and then there, were also, there was also a change to um, uh, participation in the Pledge of Allegiance, and that's uh, noted on, on page 10 in our handbook. Yes, and I can talk a little bit about um, the change to the Pledge of Allegiance. We were contacted by a family who said, um, 
that there's a particular obedience about the Pledge of Allegiance in our public schools because every morning we ask students and teachers to rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. So we looked at Mass General Law, and Mass General Law did in fact say that we are required to do the pledge every single morning in our public schools. They deemed that the words under God are not religious, but rather political. And they tell you that the words under God were added to the Pledge of Allegiance in the 1950s. So when we started to talk about this, we thought we really wanted to to allow kids to have a sense of what their rights are every morning when we recite the Pledge of Allegiance. So if students do not want to participate, they can you know, remain sitting and just watch everyone else do it. If they choose to stand up and recite the pledge and eliminate the words under God, they may. They can put in substitute words for under God. So we wanted to just make sure that families and students were aware of what their rights are. Um, in the elementary handbook where we made the same change, we noted that if you um, we're going, if your student was going to make a change in that practice, you may want to just call the teacher so that the teacher was aware that that was a decision you had made as a family. Um, but we've also trained the teachers in each one of the buildings too, so that they know that this change is coming and that it has in fact been added to the handbooks. Questions? I'm actually wondering if we should change our language at the beginning of the meeting to we invite anyone who would like to join us to stand. I mean, the, the language that we use is a little bit more like, let's all stand, Yeah. versus, yeah. 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 just wondering. No, nope, that's fine. Nancy, I'm wondering if there was any um, e any emails from any parents, any comments? No. I did not receive any emails on um, any of the things. I just wanted to commend you on your handbook. Actually, it, I read it, <laughs> and it was um, it was both readable and written with the parent and community in mind in terms of how they digest it. So I found it to be you know up to date, easy to read, and um, I know that takes a ton of work, so I don't know if it's you or Mrs. Balboa or your staff, or but I think you must be doing regular work at maintaining this. And the links were nice. It was. It's. I thought it was actually a very nice handbook. Thank you. I, it's um, so when I first became principal, I spent a lot of time on it. That was one of my first projects. But since then, I mean, we've updated every year. Um, Lisa Cardi um, out of the uh, tech office a couple of years ago was spent a lot of time um, with I think all the district handbooks. Um, she did a lot of work uh, with Rita Balboa and then every year um, I, one of the assistant principals spent a lot of time on it. So um, I, I, tr I, I like to think that people read it and my hope is that people read it. So if I, <laughs> It is you. readable. Yeah. I will say that it is readable. It's unlike, you know, someone who's like policy documents or whatever yeah. get a little dry. I mean, it is readable and seems to be written. Thank you. Sidebar. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if there are no further comments or questions, then I would seek a motion to approve the changes to the middle school handbook for 2018-2019 as outlined in our materials. So moved. Motion by Meg and a second. I'll second. Second by Jen. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. It so passes. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much you. for coming. Thank you. Thank coming. you. All right. That then we, we can circle back to the school committee vote on the school budget so that I don't get too far missing things. This is an important one. Uh, before we take a vote on this, I just wanted to open it up. If people had discussion uh, comments, I know, Meg, I know that we had discussed that you had seen it, although we did miss you uh, very much. <laughs> I'm sure you did. I, we, I, I have not received a whole lot of feedback at all about our budget, um, which is both, I think, a good sign, uh, also a little bit daunting when you're kind of out there and, and hoping that people have been following along, and silence means that they are in favor of what we have done. I have received some positive feedback from community members uh, at the hard choices that were made at trying to move a budget that was uh, close to 10% increase in the beginning down to the... 6.67%, uh, so a lot of appreciation for that work that went on. But I want to open up just for people that have any comments before we dive into a vote. Well, I, I thought it, it might be worth reminding people that I know that they're a little bit gobsmacked sometimes when they look at the numbers for special education, and I think it's worth reiterating that most of that funding goes to out-of-district placements and transportation. 
which is outrageously expensive. So, you know, these are costs that are beyond our control. We have to provide these students with these services. Um, so if there's a kind of sticker shock about it, we're all aware of that sticker shock, but the money is going in the direction it has to. Absolutely, and that's a really good point. I, and some, sometimes I, the costs that come at us related to transportation, for example, we get assessed for something that is beyond our control, that is not even entirely just about the students we have in front of us, but it is our legal obligation, our, uh, I believe our ethical and our moral obligation to provide for all of our students, um, and particularly those who are most vulnerable in the system. So, right. thank so, you. Well raised. Um, I had uh, received one comment saying that we need to do better job funding uh, because the printer in Hopkins is broken. And, you know, these are the small things that parents notice, right? They, their experience, their personal experience working with the system. That we are such a, you know, we have enough funding, we have enough funds. Why is it broken? And how would teachers and people who need to print out on a daily basis, how would they work with it? Um, so just wanted to share that. Um, also, I, you know, I put my thoughts together just going through the whole process, you know, we, we do tend to scrutinize every little bit, every little line item. Um, but I, I, I'm very appreciative of the fact that you've taken into consideration the growth, um, student needs and interests, performance measures, staff needs before proposing the plan that you did. Um, I am also very appreciative that your entire administrative team, you know, Ms. Parsons, Ms. Rathamek, and each and every member of your leadership team who has worked, um, I, I think, very collaboratively because of the results. I mean, of course I was not there, but it's evident that you have worked collaboratively to find efficiencies and better alignment. You know, you move things around to make it better aligned. And uh, I think each member did their best to keep up and have a vision, right? Dream, continue to dream for the kids and uh, aspire for the kids while being mindful of parameters that were provided by the Board of Selectmen. So I'm um, very, very appreciative of that. Um, the other things, the exciting part that this funding in the coming year uh, will help many initiatives take shape. Uh, hopefully a more meaningful 1822 program. Uh, stronger differentiated program to support all learners. Um, a better website uh, that will give a much needed facelift. Uh, these are things that stood up. Of course, there's so many others, you know, looking at athletics, art, music, just amazing. And so thankful to our taxpayers for funding this for us and for the kids. This is the future that we are investing in. And thank you to Dr. Kavanaugh thank you. for putting this together. And really, I should thank the entire administrative team because we wouldn't have the budget that we do without them. Um, from central office to every one of the buildings, they have worked really tirelessly and tediously. So I am, I'm very pleased with how things turned out, um, but I do think that it was, it was a long haul to get there. And it's just important for everyone to know that it's not easy for people to make these kinds of decisions. It was, it was painstaking at times, so thank you. Great job. Well done. I also want to just extend a thank you to our partners on the town side. Uh, mm -hmm. from, from the very beginning, I feel like we have worked well, and they have worked collaboratively with us in even just the way the best budget message was set at the beginning of the year, reflecting the, their understanding that these are tough times with enrollment and things that we need for them to have set the expectation that we would not be able to come in at the same lower percentage as we have been able to do in years past, I think made a huge difference in our ability to move forward with this. And thank you to all of you and your administrative team. Uh, I, I hope that moving this on will provide a little bit of easing in the 24-7 uh, capacity that it seems like you've been working. So. Anybody else have any? No, I, oh, sorry. Go ahead, no, I just go ahead. wanted to, to add one thing that it was very clear to me that some painful cuts had to be made. 
Um, but they were always made with a full awareness that they would not detract from the student's experience. So I feel like it's a very student-centered budget in that respect. And I know it wasn't easy to arrive at that place, but thank you all. did a great job. Is there a motion to approve the FY20 budget? There so, is. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there is, and Mina made it. <laughs> so the motion made by Mina to approve the FY20 budget, is there a second on that? Second. Ah, the second is from Meg. And a second from Meg, and all those in favor? Aye. Yes, and the budget is so approved and will be submitted tomorrow to the town, uh, and we will it will make its way through appropriations, and we will all come back again uh, hopefully in May for a, another vote. Thank you. Uh, and with that, uh, we will move into the uh, high school handbook. All right, so this is probably not <laughs> dissimilar from what Mr. Keller just told you. Uh, the changes that have been made are um, the words aggressor and perpetrator. So every time you see the word aggressor, it will say aggressor slash perpetrator. Um, and to the anti-discrimination language, anywhere that entire lineup of anti-discrimination language exists, the words homelessness and socioeconomic, um, socioeconomic status uh, have been inserted. And then finally, we also have the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, there are a couple of places I was noticing as I was looking at this. So um, as you are voting on it, you can be sure that we will clean it up before we publish it because there are some places where the font isn't quite right or we're missing quotation marks, and then there's a funny place where there's a sentence that looks like it got started. And right. <laughs> then it didn't really. So we'll work. We'll, we'll clean that up before we, we publish. Any? Will, will this come back for the 2019-2020 version in the spring? It okay. will. So yes. that, it's, that would probably reflect the, the cleanup as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my, my only comment, I, th I think the intended changes are fine. There are definitely some areas of housekeeping um, in this particular handbook. We could tweak it a bit <laughs> just to get it a little bit more readable and a little easier to navigate. And um, there were definitely some, in the, especially in the bullying section, there were some dangling sentences that were kind of, I think there was a cut and paste and a mm -hmm. miss. So yes. I think I sent those to you. And maybe um, for next year's version, we can. Make sure it's clean. Yes. And some of them on the, um, the one that's on the Google Doc mm -hmm. are different than the one that is in the packet. I mean, different. Uh, I think it's, it might have even been a formatting problem or, like you said, a cut and paste problem because some of them that are in the packets version are correct, but the doc is squirrely. Oh, so just be careful if, which one you're going to use. Okay. I'll have <laughs> yeah. Joe look very yeah. carefully yeah. at that, and we'll figure out what we need to do to clean it up. Yeah. That's great. Then I would seek a motion to approve the changes to the H Hopkinton High School Handbook for 2018 to 19, as outlined in our agenda. So moved. Motion by Mina and a second. Second. Second by Jen. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. So we pass that, and then we can scroll through. We've already done the middle school one, and that brings us down to the Elmwood School gift account. All right. So as you know. Um, Elementary schools engage with different businesses and you know, occasionally will have monies given to them to be put into a gift account. What you see before you tonight is the General Mills box top for education, and the donation would be made in the amount of $513 to go into the Elmwood School gift account. So I'm just looking for a motion um, so that we can vote on putting that money into the gift Smoked. account. Motion by Mina. A second. Second. Second by Jen. All those in favor? Yes. yes. Okay, so that's all set. And we'll all go back to cutting box tops for the next one. Um, don't yes. send in the expired ones. And, and the, uh, I used I to heard collect a box tops. About that, actually. I used to do this years ago. Is yep. the, you have to cut around them because otherwise oh. the people that are collecting them spend hours cutting yep. them out. They do. A little bit of trivia. <laughs> Who knew it was that big of a deal? Right? All right. So that moves us into the Elmwood Statement of Interest. Yes. So it has become time again to submit a Statement of Interest to the Mass School Building Authority, the MSBA, to hopefully get into the pipeline so that we can have a renovation addition project at the Elmwood School so that we can sort of update it a little bit and increase the number of classrooms that we have over there. 
Um, as you know, we submitted this last year and we were not invited in. We were denied. So hopefully with the increased enrollment, they will be a little more sensitive to our needs there because I do think that we are um, getting to a place where we're going to need additional classrooms pretty quickly to house our, our students bursting at the seams <laughs> yes so in order to do that there's a very specific um, motion that has to be read you'll I actually have a copy of it here and it, it, if I recall it has to be read out loud into the record it does it has to be read aloud because what will happen is when you submit to the MSBA the approved minutes for this evening's meeting will have to be read exactly like this um, because we are not sure of the date on which the form uh, will be submitted, um, I would just recommend that we say on or before April 12th, because that's the final date for submission. So this is plenty of these, the motion. We could perhaps provide and this is a memo to all of you regarding that motion. We could perhaps provide the. Um, Cut in case for our minute person. Oh, just yes. So she's not going to do it. So the way that it works is to do your motion, you'll just read what's inside that box beginning with having convened. Including the word result? No, I think you just you can just start with having convened in an open session. So I would seek the following motion. Having convened in an open meeting on January 17, 2019, prior to the SOI submission closing, on the, what is, what, this was the Oh, the, you'll date. wait till you get to the blank. The, the, school committee, the school committee of Hopkinton, Mass., in accordance with its charter bylaws and ordinances, is voted to authorize the superintendent to submit to the Massachusetts School Building Authority the statement of interest form dated, this is where I'm inserting, on or before April on, 12th, on or before April 12th 2019 for the Elmwood School located at 14 Elm Street, Hopkinton, Mass., which describes and explains the following deficiencies in the priority categories for which an application may be submitted to the Massachusetts School Building Authority in the future. One, priority number four, prevention of severe overcrowding expected to result from increased enrollments. And two, priority number five, replacement, renovation, or modernization of school facility systems such as windows, accessibility, heating, and ventilation systems to increase energy conservation and decrease energy-related costs in a school facility. And hereby further, further specifically acknowledges that by submitting this statement of interest form, the Massachusetts School Building Authority in no way guarantees the acceptance or approval of an application, the awarding of a grant, or any other funding commitment from the Massachusetts School Building Authority or commits the city, town, regional school district to filing an application for funding with the Massachusetts School Building Authority. So moved. Is that a motion by Meg yes. and a second? A second by Jen and all those in favor? All right. Aye. 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 So that is a unanimous vote there to submit the statement of interest. From here, great. From here, it goes to the board of selectmen. Is that it? It does. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. So we're waiting to be invited to a board of selectmen meeting. Thank you. Okay, and that moves us into policy. So we have school policy, school committee policy AC, non-discrimination and civil rights, notice to students, parents, and employees. And that is you, Dr. Kavanaugh. Okay. I'm gonna find which one it is. So many here. So yes, we, we were not quite as heavy with policy while we were going through the budget. I, looks like we have some good ones coming up. Here you go. Okay, I have found it. Uh, so this one's a very simple one. It was actually um, last voted on uh, in September. 
when we amended it on the 6th of September in a meeting. The only reason that we have brought it back tonight is because with our tiered focus monitoring or coordinated program review, we have to add the words homelessness and socioeconomic status to um, all of those protected classes there. So as long as we are comfortable adding the required language, homelessness and socioeconomic status, we will be perfectly fine. We've taken out physical handicap because disability takes the place of that. And I think that we had done that last time. Okay. Looks good. Questions, comments? Nope. Special thank you to the policy working group again. Uh, I would seek a motion to approve policy AC non-discrimination and civil rights notice to students, parents, and employees. So moved. Motion by Mina and second. Second. Second by Jen. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. And so that is also unanimous. <coughs> to school committee policy JICFB, bullying prevention and intervention. All right. This is another one that comes to us as a result of the coordinated program review tiered focus monitoring. The last time this was before you and uh, adopted was April 12th of 2018. So what we're looking at here is just a change in language. Uh, we have the new definition for aggressor perpetrator. And that is a student or staff member of a school, including but not limited to an educator, administrator, school nurse, cafeteria worker, custodian, bus driver, athletic coach, advisor to an extracurricular activity, or prior professional who engages in behavior defined as bullying, cyberbullying, or retaliation in Mass General Law Chapter 71. Uh, this person is sometimes referred to as the bully. And then, I believe that there may be under target and aggressor support, the one thing that we needed to add according to um, the state is that we have to say protections are extended to students who are bullied by a member of the staff when the staff member is na named as an aggressive perpetrator in a bullying report. So that was something that we did not have in our policy when we approved it um, last year. Okay. So, any questions? Anything? then I would seek a motion to approve policy JICFB, Bullying Prevention and Intervention. Second. Second. So motion by Megan, a second by Mina. All those in favor? Aye. Yes. That is unanimous and so passes. And that moves us into the Bullying Prevention and Intervention Plan. Okay. So the exact same language has been added to the bullying plan. So anywhere where you see all of the protected classes, homelessness and socioeconomic status has been added. Protections are extended to students who are bullied by a member of the staff and the change in definition for aggressor and perpetrator. Other than that, I don't think that there are any other changes to this plan. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Questions, comments on this plan? Okay, then in that case, I would seek a motion to approve the bullying prevention and intervention plan as outlined in the agenda materials. So moved. Motion by Meg and a second. Second. Second by Jen. All those in favor? Aye. Yes. I, I am also an aye, and it is unanimous, and so carries. And that brings us into school committee policy JFBB school choice. All right, so school choice comes back every year, and Again, we are just looking at school choice because we have to add homelessness and socioeconomic status. Okay. So you can see where it's redlined. Yes. So questions, comments? Okay. So then I would seek a motion to approve policy JFBB school choice. So moved. Motion by Meg and a second. Second. Second by Mina. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. And I am uh, yes also, and it's so curious. And just to note, because we did have a question about this during office hours, this does not um, make us a choice district. This just is the policy that has to be, we have to affirm our choice annually anyway. So that's separate from our, cho our choice not to choose. <laughs> well, that brings us into old business policy JLCE, cardiopulmonary resuscitation and first aid. All right, so we had a reading of this policy last September 20th, 
And I think we sort of put it on the back burner until we were sure that we had a mechanism in place to um, change the batteries in all of our AEDs throughout the district. So we do, in fact, have that. The uh, train, athletic trainer will be responsible for all of the athletic ones. And we have contracted with a company that will come in and change the batteries in all of the building and central office ones. And so we have provided for you the contract with CF Medical. Thank you. Any questions? I feel like our energy is going down here. <laughs> we need to liven it up. Uh -huh. just being efficient. Very okay. Efficient. <laughs> Motion to approve policy JLCE, cardiopulmonary resuscitation and first aid. So moved. Motion by Meg and a second. Second. By Mina. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And it is unanimous and so carries. And that moves us into the school calendar. And I will say, um, just before you go into it, this is an item that I actually received a great deal of um, correspondence about this week. I think even before people were aware that it was on our agenda for this week, people have been looking for the calendar. Apparently, there, uh, there are districts that approve three years out, um, yes. which we have not discussed. But uh, so I was able to say with confidence that this was coming to this school committee meeting. So I'll let you. OK. So um, in presenting this calendar, we had, uh, we had had it here um, a few weeks ago in December and then uh, brought it back tonight for a second reading. And you can see that we've left in August 30th, which it gives everyone that sort of long Labor Day weekend. We had originally uh, put Thanksgiving in the wrong place, so that has been corrected. <laughs> Um, and the only other thing that I will say about the calendar tonight is if you are looking at all of the yellow days on this calendar, those are defined as either early release days or early dismissal days. And so early dismissal are the ones that happen before Thanksgiving and on the last day of school and early release are all of the others. An interesting thing that happens here is that there are times when the elementary schools have an early release day, but the high school and middle school do not. We've never had a problem with it until this year. This year, what has happened is when the elementaries do their early release, for whatever reason, that second tier bus run that goes from Elmwood and uh, Marathon has been getting to the high school and middle school late. And so while some buses make it on time, other buses do not. And in talking with our school resource officers and with uh, Mrs. Rothermick and Marianne Fitzpatrick, who is our uh, transportation coordinator, we're starting to get a little bit worried that with buses coming and going and kids out there sort of milling about for five, six, eight, ten minutes, that there's a safety hazard. What we are going to try to do is to see if we can't rectify the busing issue, but in the event that we feel like it would be safer, those times might be a little bit changed on some of those yellow days. It would be ideal if we could eliminate the notion of early release and early dismissal and just unify that whole thing. Yes. So yeah. we are working on that, but it may actually require a subcommittee to get that job done. <laughs> Yesterday, we thought we had it all figured out for the elementaries, and we did, and then we forgot that there was a high school and middle school. So back to the old drawing board today so that anyway the calendar is is good we think in terms of our schools the way it looks right now it's just going to be a matter of changing times we think on the yellow days can i ask you one question of course. um in april it, when is patriots day i think it might it's be on usually the 20th. third monday and i think it's the 20th in 2020. Uh, you have another problem with this calendar I, I apologize i just noticed that Fine, this afternoon a great question I think that we need to have that off. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> yes, it is the twentieth. Yeah, I was going to say it's always the third Monday. So, so vacation. The twentieth being, so vacation is incorrect. I think it has to shift. Yep. Yeah. All right, we'll fix that. Sorry, I didn't see it sooner. No, right no, no, that's, that's a great catch. That's a great catch. Yeah. That's funny because I have that Sunday. Mm -hmm. I have a suggestion to make, weeks. if I may. Sure. Um, so first, I, I, I see that you've also made the adjustment from Columbus State to Indigenous people. We did. Yes. Yes. Um, so, so that's great. Um, the other thing I was, you know, I, I've heard um, this on social media and otherwise from parents for requests to acknowledge some other holidays that are being celebrated in the community. And, um, you know, the community is, of course, growing and becoming more and more diverse. 
um, so how can we accommodate or at least acknowledge um, all the various holidays and celebrations that happen. And in my mind, I was thinking that perhaps we could mark a few holidays, uh, kind of put a circle around them. I know it's a busy calendar. So, uh, you know, marking them with yet another bright color, I, I don't know, that may be jarring to the eyes, but just to kind of circle it out, that may help, um, you know, folks be more aware mm -hmm. um, and be sensitive uh, based on the holiday that's going on. Um, I appreciated what you shared of, with the work, Dr. Kavanaugh, that has happened in the Westboro Public Schools mm -hmm. and also Ashland. I was hoping if we could consider um, Eid al Adha. Eid al Fitr, the Lunar New Year, Diwali, and Kwanzaa um, as a starting point okay. to circle and mark in the main calendar, not a separate calendar, mm -hmm. so that it becomes more and more in everyone's cognition. Do you want to give me those dates? Um, uh, is it okay if I send it to you via email? Yes, that's perfect. Thank you. Because uh, it seems that Eid happens, falls on two days based on how the moon is. So I would want to consult with someone as to which date is uh, better marked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or which days kids may be out and to celebrate. Right, right. exactly. If it's one or the other. All right. Sorry, I was just going to thank you for bringing that forward. I think that there are definitely people I have heard in the community that would like to see this on our calendar, so thank you for calling attention to it here. Mm -hmm. uh, my question for parents who are sort of eager to get a look at this, um, could we just advise them to look at the school committee packet for tonight? And the one thing that you know we need to notice is that the April vacation will be Thanksgiving. Well, Thanksgiving has been cleaned up. Oh, it is. <laughs> yes. Oh, it, it, it is, but it's not in the actual. I had clean copies for you. Okay, sorry. that's why. That's why. Dr. Uh, Kavanaugh, would you prefer that I share the dates that I have researched? Uh, and uh, Sure, that would be so, wonderful. Um, and if there is any adjustment, we'll let you know. Mm -hmm. Just give me one moment. So, yes, yeah, so people can look in the to see what we have for the, the basic start and end dates, I think, are the big pieces people are okay. looking at now. Mm -hmm. uh, and then if once this is cleaned up um, with all the additional dates added in and uh, Patriot's Day corrected, if we could put that up on the district website, that would be great. Will do. Thank yes. You. Just a moment. Thank you, Mina. I think any effort just to make it feel more inclusive is, is welcome. Yeah. Okay. Except for we don't have Karl Marx's birthday here. Right? <laughs> I'll let that slip. May 5th. Okay, do you want it to know? May 5th. I'll, yeah. I'll be happy to celebrate it with you, Meg. Uh, do you want to vote on this with those changes, or do you want to bring it back? I, I think people are anxious to have it voted on. I think on. so, too. Right. And if people yeah. are comfortable mm -hmm. that you have the notes to yeah. go back Other to. Other than with that one big change. Right? Yeah. May I give you those dates? Do you want those dates right now? No, if you email them, we'll do this tomorrow. Okay, but we are also voting on the fact that we will circle. Uh, yes, yes. Five yes. religious and culture or so other. Would you be willing to read those aloud into the motion when we make the sure. motion just for the sake of the minutes? Sure. Anybody else? Okay. All right, then. I would seek a motion to approve uh, the 2019-2020 the school calendar um, as amended in the meeting here. And with, uh, do you just want to read the dates again? Or sure. not the dates, but the, which particular holidays we're going to circle. Eid al-Adha, Eid al-Fitr, Luna New Year, Diwali, and Kwanzaa. Motion. So moved. Motion by Jen and a second. Second. Second by Meg. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. So it passes, and it will be up on the website uh, soon. <laughs> well, Definitely not week later week than week. Monday. How's that? Not later, or Tuesday, since Monday oh, is a Tuesday, holiday. Yes. Uh -huh. We'll be home in the snow on Monday. Uh, we, we'll, we'll hopefully be at the middle school at the Martin Luther King's 
yeah, celebration here. I'm hoping that the snow does not keep us yes. uh, inbound so all as well, because that would be, uh, although I have heard some very wild large numbers for accumulation. So yeah. It'll, it'll all be cleaned up by Monday. Oh, no doubt. Actually, we, we are very fortunate. I have noticed when I have driven around after storms that Hopkinton roads are better mm -hmm. than typically they our surrounding. Our, our DPW is pretty good. All right, so that then brings us down, uh, I guess, to our opportunity for public comment here. Uh, and I see, in, unless Bob would like to come forward for a public comment, I think we are uh, <laughs> all set with public comment. Uh, and that moves us then into items by consensus. All right, so as superintendent, I recommend that the school committee vote to approve um, the items by consensus as outlined in your agenda. So moved. Motion by Mina and a second. Second by Meg. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. 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 And the items by consensus are approved. And then I would seek a motion for adjournment. So moved. Motion by Meg and a second. Second. Second by Mina. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. And it carries. And we are adjourned at 8.54 p.m. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. And I will hopefully see everybody here for our next meeting on February 7th at 7 p.m. Thank you and have a good night.